Welcome to Dear Victoria Church Online. My name is John Hopkins and it's great to have you here. If it's your first time, what a blessing that you decided to click on this video. We would like to invite you to leave a comment below or send us a message on our Facebook page so that we can connect with you after this. For our dear family, thank you for joining us once again. And you'll know that we're busy with a series currently where Pastor Gary is speaking about the greatest sermon that was ever preached. And we're super excited about it. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy the sermon with us. As the camera zooms in on his face, because he needs to answer a very important question. The disciples threw in this question because they're wondering about this. The blind man sitting next to the road, and their question is this. Jesus, who have sinned, this man or his parents? As the camera moves closer and you can see the intensity in Jesus' eyes, you know that whatever he's going to say is going to blow their minds. But still, it lingers in the atmosphere. Was it because of his parents or was it because of his sins? Neither, Jesus says. It wasn't his parents or him. This man was blind from birth to display the glory of God. Well, this happened in John 9, while Jesus was busy just walking with his disciples along the road. And in this moment, Jesus had that answer to a question that they were wondering about, and a lot of people were talking about for a very long time. Weird answer. It wasn't anybody's fault, but it was to display the glory of God. But if you think that answer is weird, then reconsider what Jesus did next as the weirdest thing. Because in that moment, you can imagine disciples and everybody around him waiting in this moment. And if I have to take you maybe again into a, into a movie scene where this might be a tension moment, Jesus suddenly um, does this very interesting thing. Everybody's waiting to see Jesus displaying the glory of God. You can see Jesus looking at the blind man. And everybody's thinking that now something miraculous is going to happen. Now suddenly the skies are going to open. It might be the Father's voice again, or maybe a thunder. It might be the sound of angels singing to display the glory of God. This is going to be a miraculous, wonderful moment. As Jesus looks at this blind man, Intensely, everybody's looking at Jesus. Everybody's seeing what he is about to do. And very slowly, he moves something in his mouth. And in this moment, I can just imagine the disciples thinking, well, he's going to, he's going to say something profound now. But, it, but then that movement looks like he's chewing on something. And then slowly, he pulls back with a loud sound that made everybody around him most probably think, yuck, this is not nice. And the next moment, the glory displayed moment, Jesus spits on the ground. And as he spits on the ground, he bends down and he starts mixing his spit 
with the fresh ground. What's happening, Jesus? To display the glory of God? To display the glory of God, you're spitting on the ground? Hey, I know that everybody would be freaking out today if, if Jesus had to spit on the ground, especially with COVID-19 going around. You don't just do that, spit somewhere. There's germs in there, man. But Jesus spits on the ground and he goes down and he starts mixing and making a mud. Well, it makes matters worse displaying the glory of God. He walks over to this blind man that asked him to heal his eyes and he, he puts mud, this messy spit ground mud right over his eyes and says to him, go and wash your eyes. Well, this is a very interesting thing. It was a total different way for Jesus to display the glory of God. But you will know that this is just the way that the heavens operated on the earth. It was in the ordinary things. It was in a bit of spit with mud. Oh, the glory of God was displayed somewhere in Bethlehem at the back door where the animals used to stay, most probably in some form of a cage, where the king of glory was born. He's in the ordinary, in the ordinary staff of Moses, in the ordinary sling of David. It is in the ordinary things of life that God displays His glory. It's nothing new. God uses just a little bit of water, or He would just use a rock. But God displays His glory through these things in the ordinary of life. Well, that's maybe what Jesus was also trying to, to say in his incredible Sermon on the Mount. In this sermon, while he was speaking to, to his disciples and to the people around him, he said, Blessed are the meek, because they will inherit the earth. Maybe that moment with the blind man was the way that Jesus showed them. It's in the ordinary. It's not in the flashy lights. It's not in the thunderstorms. It's not in those kind of things that he displays his glory. But it's in the ordinary things in this life where God shows up with power and with strength. And it seems that Jesus wanted these disciples and everybody around him to know that that is the great thing. That moment when you become meek, when you become humble, it is in that moment that you are truly blessed because you will inherit the earth. I think Jesus displayed it in every single thing that he did. And even on the cross, you see, Jesus giving up himself with all the power and with all the ability. But he still said, I'm not going to call the angels and display my power among them. I'm rather going to humble myself. Oh, Paul says it in Philippians 2 like this. He says, we should have the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus who humbled himself and didn't, uh, didn't consider his identity as being God, something to be grasped. But to become one of us, to walk among us, to become a human being. And, and he did that in obedience, obedience to the Father. Oh, that is what Jesus' people should be. That's what we should be. We should be meek. Because Jesus says, the meek will inherit the earth. You will be blessed. This is the third week where we are speaking about the greatest sermon that Jesus ever preached. The Sermon on the Mount. And in this week, specifically, this verse is the desire of my heart. 
that this will become something that we will embrace even more in our own lives, in my own life and in your life, that we will know that if we become humble, if we become meek, we will inherit the earth. That it is not through the display of our power and our strength that that um, the God's glory is revealed, but it, it is through us becoming humble and becoming meek. It is in that moment. It is not in our muscles, but it is in our availability that God displays His power. You don't have to have the strength. I know society wants us to have the strength. You know, cowboys don't cry. You should show power in business, in your personal life, in every area. Power is a sign of displaying glory, but not according to Jesus. He turns everything upside down in the way that he speaks to his disciples when he says, blessed are the meek, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who are humble, because they will inherit the earth. Well, later on in that incredible sermon, if you want to see it practically, Jesus actually says these words in Matthew 5. Jesus says, verse 38, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Jesus gives us this feeling of meekness where he says, the moment you get slapped on the one cheek, turn the other cheek. And I think for all of us, that's most, most probably one of the most difficult things through the years. I've heard many people speak about that and saying, I don't know if I'm able to do it. But Jesus says, if you really want to inherit the earth, you have to become meek. You have to become, you have to become humble. And then you will inherit the earth. You will be blessed. I've heard men tell me, well, you know what? The great thing about that verse is, Jesus says, if they slap you on the one cheek, turn the other cheek. But Jesus never says what happens after you turn the other cheek. And I think a lot of people feel that way. I'll turn just once. But after that, I'm going to take over. But that was never the heart of Jesus. Jesus wanted us to understand that in his character, in who he is, he was humble. His identity was humble. He was someone that didn't grasp to be God. He was this, he was God that decided to come to this earth. He was God that decided to become a human being. He was God that was at a young age obedient to a mom and a dad. He was God that didn't want an entrance, a royal entrance into Jerusalem. He, he just preferred a donkey. He was God. But he didn't, he didn't seem to, to be worried about eating with some sinners and tax collectors and he wasn't worried about washing the feet of his disciples. As a matter of fact, in the last verse of Matthew 5, the Bible tells us exactly like this. It says, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. We should be perfect as our heavenly Father is perfect. 
And sometimes I think for us as human beings, that is our problem, is that we can grasp the power of God. We can grasp that God has all the knowledge. We can grasp the fact that uh, that God is omnipotent, that He is everywhere. We can grasp those kind of characteristics about God. But one of the characteristics that we miss out, that God in His DNA, God in who He is, is is someone that is humble and that, and that doesn't mind to serve even his creation. Can you imagine the creator of heaven and earth just entering the small planet and just coming to live among us? And Jesus' encouragement to us is, you also be perfect, just like your Father is perfect. That's what He wants. That's what He expects from us. Well, you might be thinking now, well, that's, that's tough. That's hard. I don't know if I'm able to do it. How should I do it? How will I be able in this day and age, in this world, in this society, in in this culture that says it's survival of the fittest, how will I be able to live in that way? How will I be able to just say, well, I'm, I'm going to be humble and I'm not going to use my power. Well, I think that's the good news. Is that this verse doesn't say blessed are the weak. It says blessed are the meek. It is not a fact of, of being weak. Sometimes we think that being humble is being weak, but it's not being weak. Being humble may be the secret of being humble lies in the fact of the last part of this verse, where it says that they will inherit the earth. Because the inheritance belongs to sons and daughters. Inheritance can only be given from a father and a mother that gives it to their children. Yes, I know you've also got all those males, those fake males where they say an aunt or an auntie or somebody has passed away and you've, you've inherited millions and millions of, of dollars. I know you've also got it and sometimes it does happen that you inherit from another family member. But in general purpose and general, um, society, The inheritance comes from a mom or a dad. The inheritance comes from our Father who are in heaven. I think the only way that we can truly know and truly be humble and truly have strength to be humble is not to be weak, but not to use our power in gain for ourselves but to only focus on our Heavenly Father and get our identity as sons and daughters of the living God. That's where it lies. Jesus Himself said, I and the Father is one. Jesus Himself said, Lord, not my will be done, but Your will be done. Jesus said, I will only do what I see my Father is doing. See, I believe that for us to become meek, we have to find our identity as sons and daughters of the living God. Because in that, we will realize where we come from. We will realize our origin. And we will realize where the applause needs to be. Who you need to truly impress. And who you don't have to worry about and who you don't have to care about and fight with, then you realize that God 
is the one that you need to focus on. Even if you have to think about the birth of Jesus, when Jesus was born, it was again this ordinary place where he was born. Very ordinary. Not in a king's style. But in the midst of this, in the midst of this ordinary earthly happening, there's also a display of what happens in heaven. Because the Bible tells us that in that night, while the shepherd was out on the field, suddenly there was an angel that appeared and said, I bring good news to you. And in that moment, the angels joined in and they started singing, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to man. See, it is like God wanted us to know that yes, it might seem ordinary. Yes, it might seem ordinary that Jesus was born in this ordinary situation. But let me tell you, the heavens is rejoicing. The heavens is applauding. The heavens is busy currently with a, with a great celebration of the small thing that happened on earth. Oh, even though the, the innkeeper didn't have place for them. They had to say, well, okay, we don't have place to stay in. The innkeeper didn't have any place for them. They had to go to this cave, even though that was their situation in the ordinary. I just know that the heavens was rejoicing. And that's the way that I believe that we as followers of Jesus Christ should react. I believe that we should always have our eyes on the heavens. We should always have our eyes on where the applause is. And we should always have our eyes on the one that calls us his beloved sons and daughters. You see, just before the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus uh, was baptized. And just after his baptism, the heavens opened and the Father spoke. You could again see after this ordinary just act of, of going under the water, John baptizing like he's baptizing everybody every single day. Suddenly you get another glimpse into the heavens. The Father opens up the heavens and says, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. I think we should focus on the heavens. I think that will help us when it comes to the earth. Because it doesn't matter if you, if they slap you on the one side, then you will be able to turn the other cheek. Because you know, you're not working for the applause or the credit of this world. You're working for the credit and you're standing for the credit of the Father in heaven. I remember in 1995, I was a young man, and I remember that moment when we won the Rugby World Cup. I also remember many years later in 2007 when we won the Rugby World Cup. And now, again, 2019, we got it again. But between the difference between 2007 and 1995 is this, that in 1995, the Rugby World Cup was in South Africa. And every part of that final, everybody that was shouting was, was cheering for the Springboks. And the whole crowd, everybody was just behind them, and the whole of South Africa was behind them. And wherever they went, just in the hours before that last game, before the final was just incredible because everybody was supporting the Springboks. 2007, when we won the World Cup, we won the World Cup not in South Africa. And in that final against England, we didn't get all the support. Uh, we played in Europe and, and there was much more support for England. 
And I can imagine just like that picture, that moment when South Africa played in 2007, it was a little bit different where they were booed on the field and where, where everybody wasn't with them, where everybody didn't cheer with them. But even in the midst of the battle on that rugby field, even in the midst of the booing or the shouting or whatever happened to the team, they stuck through it because they knew where they came from. And even though that crowd wasn't applauding them, they knew that there was a crowd back at home that was supporting them completely. And I think we sometimes forget about that crowd that is supporting us. We're forgetting about the heavenly crowd that is supporting us. And we forget sometimes that we are called sons and daughters of the living God. Well, this verse that says, blessed are the meek, because they will inherit the earth. Yes, sons and daughters that will inherit the earth. And the only way that we can do this is if we uh, get to a place where we say, we will focus on being sons and daughters of the living God. I think it's the biggest thing that concerns me about atheism is the fact that atheism, in a quote by, I read this quote, let me put it this way. I read a quote from a man with the name John Dixon. And this is what he said. He said, atheism certainly promotes a low view of humanity. How much lower can you get than thinking yourself an accidental byproduct of a series of even larger accidents? See, and this is the thing that when I read it the first time, I, I, I just realized that this is the thing that bothers me. That our culture and society around us, and, and especially when it comes to atheism, has got this idea that, that there's no value to life. But I believe that there's value to life. I believe that you're not a byproduct because of a big, ba big bang, and, and you're not a byproduct just because of an accident that happened there, and now suddenly you're just an accident down the line. But that you're truly created by the God of heaven and earth, the God that has purpose for your life, the God that wants to lead you, the God that cares about you, the God that says that I have called you and I have called you by your name. I think that being meek and being humble is actually not trying everything out of our own strength and out of our own power, but to, to rather say, I want to do what I see my father is doing. I think it has to do with focusing on heaven and what the heavens applauds. You're not an accident. You're not just the byproduct of a lot of accidents. And even though you might feel that way some days, even though you might feel that people are treating you some days like that, even though you might feel that people are slapping you in the face, and, and even though you feel that way, Jesus says, turn the other cheek. It is okay. Be perfect like your Father is in heaven. Don't believe the lie of the enemy. You are more than a conqueror because of Jesus Christ, not because of a worldly standard, not because of the things that happens in this world, but because of what Christ did and because of what is happening in the heavens. Paul writes to the Colossian church and he says to the Colossian church that therefore, Put your minds on the things that he is above. The heavenly things. He wants us to focus on that. And in that way, the sorrow, the pain, the thing around the things around us will not take hold of us. And it will be in the ordinary things that we will see the glory of God being displayed. 
I want to end off saying that after Jesus put mud on that guy's face, on, on his eyes, I don't know how that guy got up. I don't know how that man got to the, the place where he had to wash the mud off and wash his eyes with water. But that is what he needed to do. And the Bible tells us, after he did that, his eyes were opened and he could see. He wasn't blind anymore. The glory of God was displayed. Follower of Jesus, I want to encourage you today. And I want to say, do not miss the ordinary moments. Do not miss even those moments where you feel that you are being treated badly for the sake of God. Because in that, God will display His glory. He will. Let's close our eyes and pray together. Heavenly Father, as we are recording again today, for everyone out there, wherever they are in their homes, with their families, with friends, with loved ones, I know, Lord, that we all sometimes struggle with this, Lord. But I'm just reminded in these moments when, when I cannot see the crowd, I know there are people out there, Lord, that needs to hear this. And I'm reminded in this moment, just like I cannot see the crowd, I cannot see exactly always the picture in the heavens. But I know that the heavens is rejoicing. I know that the heavens is rejoicing about men and women. Father, they are even going through difficult times. I know that the heavens is rejoicing, Father, over those that have turned the other cheek, that have walked the extra mile. I know that the heavens is rejoicing because of those that know that their identity has nothing to do with what people around them do against them, but their identity is hidden in God and being sons and daughters of the living God. I pray, Father, that you in this moment will come and comfort, come and bring peace, come and restore, come and, come and give the comfort that we need to know today that in the ordinary you display your glory. Thank you, Father, that you hear us today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are not an accident. You are God's son, God's daughter. If you have decided to follow Jesus, you are not an accident. And I want to encourage you I want to say, take this opportunity. Recommit yourself to Jesus and follow Him. He didn't consider it to, as, as becoming weak when He gave up His godly position in order to become a human being, to die for you on the cross. He did it for you. Why don't you just humble yourself today? Bow your knee and say, Lord, here I am. I want to be a son and a daughter of God. God bless you.